Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. A symbol of power, progress, and supremacy, both the San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge and the USS Bonhomme Richard amphibious assault ship represent engineering marvels. These massive floating vessels are primordial in bringing U.S. air bases closer to assault target grounds. In today's feature, we will explore the amazing feat that this ship can do. The USS Bonhomme Richard was the sixth amphibious assault ship of the eight in the WASP-class fleet of the United States Navy. Commissioned in 1998, the vessel was about 844 feet long, with a flight deck width of 105 feet, capable of accommodating more than 60 aircraft on board. After 22 years of service, however, the Bonhomme Richard was decommissioned, following a fire accident which massively damaged the ship. It was estimated that the repair work on the ship will take about seven years and cost up to $3.2 billion. Reason why in April 2021, she was officially decommissioned and sold as scrap after a colorful decommissioning ceremony at the Naval Base in San Diego, California. When in active service, the flight deck of an amphibious assault ship is usually a very busy place with various teams performing specific tasks with high precision and professionalism. Among the over 3,000 personnel on board an assault ship, there is one captain and over 200 officers who assist in choreographing movements of aircraft on and off the deck and every other operation from FOD walks to jet launch sequences and flight time schedules. Amphibious uh, landings are, are probably the most complex evolution because it combines all uh, aspects of, it brings together the ships, the landing craft, uh, the aircraft, the, the troops, uh, and they all have to come together in a synchronized fashion uh, at the right time, at the right place. Um, so it's, it can be incredibly complex, especially when you, you try and mitigate all of the threats, uh, both environmental and uh, from our enemies, potentially. Uh, that, that's what makes them so difficult to achieve. With a length of about 844 feet, amphibious assault ships are designed to accommodate Stovall, or short takeoff and vertical landing aircraft which need little or no roll space during takeoff and landing. Motions that require strict coordination. The AV-8B Harrier aircraft, for instance, can land vertically because its jet engine provides a high stream of fast-moving air through nozzles attached to the side of the engine. Similarly, a system that controls the rotation of the nozzles directs the thrust downwards, counteracting the weight of the aircraft and enabling a smooth vertical movement. The large open well deck located below the aft of the ship is a veritable base for launching and recovering landing craft and other amphibious assault vehicles, or AAVs. As you can see by the ramp at the back, uh, so when it gets to the beach, the ramp goes down and then the troops go out. Uh, so these vehicles are designed uh, with flat bottoms, so when they get to the beach, um, they get as close uh, to where we're going to be assaulting as possible. These vehicles are launched at an interval of 165 to 245 feet. With a green flag or a green light used to signal the forward movement. During these deployments, 
The well deck is partially flooded with water for easy embarkation and deployment of AAVs. While all these activities are being carried out, the quartermaster meticulously ascertains the ship's position using global positioning system and other visual navigation aids. In the midst of all this hard work, mealtimes are not left out. Food on board is self-served for the entire crew with a dedicated cafeteria for dining. Despite the glory days, however, every naval vessel ultimately faces an end of career. When a Navy vessel is formally decommissioned, it is usually towed to a stowage facility or fleet reserve till its fate is decided. Most of them are ultimately scrapped for recycling. However, a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier called the USS Midway still stands tall as a tourist attraction. Revamped into the USS Midway Museum in June 2004, this aircraft carrier was one of the longest serving aircraft carriers in the 20th century. Today, the massive vessel is visited by millions of people and offers a range of interactive exhibitions. 25 restored aircraft lining its deck, a self-guided audio tour, and numerous other artifacts on its large flight deck and the well deck sections. Apart from attracting tourists on land, some wrecked Navy vessels have been drawing the attention of deep sea divers as well. The USS San Diego was the largest and only major US warship lost in the First World War. It sank in July 1918 off the coast of Fire Island, New York. Located in just 100 feet of water, the USS San Diego has become a popular site for recreational diving. In 2017, a remote sensing survey of its wreckage was conducted to collect information to analyze the structural and archaeological integrity of the wreck. The information gathered was also intended to help determine the reason for the USS San Diego's sinking. Similar to Navy vessels, decommissioned military aircraft also serve numerous purposes. In the case of a crash, the crash damage or disabled aircraft recovery, or CDDAR team, first recovers the remains and moves it to a site where it can be used for squadron training requirements and other purposes. In 2015, during a simulation, the CDDAR hoisted a McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom aircraft as part of a training exercise on how to lift a damaged aircraft in emergency situations. This helps the recovery airmen to sharpen and maintain their crash recovery skills. Some of these retired aircraft are painted and either displayed in aircraft museums or serve as banner aircraft in an air station where each squadron is allowed one brightly painted display aircraft as its own banner. Even in retirement, some of these aircraft and sea vessels continue to be very useful as the stories of their past glories continue to inspire future generations, acting as benchmarks for greater inventiveness. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.